Welcome to Respiratory HQ. I'm Tanya Peel, and today we are going to talk about ABG interpretation. Because when you learn it in school, let's face it, it can be a little bit confusing. So I have a tool that I think is going to simplify the process into three easy steps. So I call this my ABG interpretation fast fact sheet. So let's go over the sheet, make sure we're understanding what everything is on it, and then I'll give you an example interpretation. All right, the top part of this sheet are just values you are going to have to memorize, but you're going to use this concept throughout your entire career. You're going to have to memorize the normal values on an ABG. So the normal value for pH is 7.35 to 7.45, for PaCO2, 35 to 45 millimeters of mercury, PaO2 is 80 to 100 millimeters of mercury, and bicarbonate is 22 to 26 milli equivalents per liter. All right, once you have those memorized, we also need to understand the relationship of CO2 and bicarbonate on the pH, okay? For example, a pH less than 7.35 is an acidosis. And when we're looking at a blood gas, there are two things that cause an acidosis. A rise in the CO2 or an increase in the CO2 level above 45, or a decrease in the bicarbonate level below 22, okay? Both of those conditions can cause an acidotic state. We just gotta figure out which one is the cause. A pH of seven point, or greater than 7.45 is an alkalosis. So the two things on a blood gas that can cause an alkalotic condition is a decrease in CO2 or an increase in bicarb. So a decrease in CO2 less than 35 or an increase in bicarbonate greater than 26. All right, so you have to have this information memorized to be able to interpret an ABG. Now we're ready to do the three simple steps. The first step, you're gonna end up labeling all the components of your ABG. When you do this, you can determine your primary condition. Now, when I interpret, I label the components with both words and arrows. I'll show you in a minute what I mean. The second step after you label is to determine which system is at fault. If the CO2 is causing the issue, we're gonna term it a respiratory problem. If the bicarb is causing the issue, we're gonna term it a metabolic problem. So once we have the system at fault identified, we're gonna look for degree of compensation. And when blood gases are compensated, they're either compensated, uh, they're either called uncompensated, partially compensated, or fully compensated gas. So keep this handy and let's talk about an ABG. So let's say we have a pH of 7.23, a PaCO2 of 62, and a bicarbonate level of 23. Okay. We'll work the PO2 into this in just a minute. All right. So. The first step is to label all the components. Now I said I use arrows and words. So for example, a pH of 7.23, that is an acidic pH. So I'm gonna label this an acid. All right, when we look at a PaCO2, a PaCO2 of 62 is elevated and a high CO2 will create an acid. The bicarb is 23. That is an absolutely normal bicarb. So that's not gonna really impact the pH as far as making changes from normal. So we're just gonna label it as normal. Okay, so we've labeled all the components. The second step is to determine which system is at fault. It's just this easy. Look at your pH. The overall condition is an acidic condition, okay? So we're gonna call this an acidosis. So when we're looking at which one of these systems is causing an acidosis, all you have to do is find the word that says acid. And if we look, the CO2 
is causing that acidic condition. So the respiratory system is responsible for the drop in pH. So this is a respiratory acidosis. The third step is identifying the degree of compensation. So once you determine the system that it is fault, so in this case, it's the respiratory system, you move to the opposite system, which is your metabolic system, the bicarb. All right, so we're gonna look at the bicarb and ask ourselves: has this bicarb moved from its normal range in an attempt to fix the pH? And the fact this is normal, it hasn't moved at all. So therefore, there is no compensation occurring at this time. So we call this an uncompensated respiratory acidosis. Okay. Now, the only other thing we have to work into ABG interpretation is the PaO2. So if you remember the PaO2 ranges, normal is 80 to 100. Okay. Mild hypoxemia is 60 to 79. Moderate is going to be 40 to 59 and severe will be less than 40 and these are all millimeters of mercury so after you get your acid base balance taken care of coming back here after you say okay this is an uncompensated respiratory acidosis you're going to look at your pa pao2 and typically that's right here in between the two so let's say we have a PaO2 on this patient of eh, 70. All right. In this case, that's going to be classified as mild hypoxemia. So we would call this an uncompensated respiratory acidosis with mild hypoxemia. So I hope you found this fast fact sheet useful. If you want to carry it forward and look at different degrees of compensation and the differences between respiratory and metabolic disturbances, check me out at my website, respiratoryhq.com.